I've started climbing in the Alps in a place called Algoi, that's where I grew up. And I've been traveling a lot. I've been traveling to Arco in Italy, to other places, France, Switzerland, Austria. And after a while, maybe after three, four years climbing, I came to Frankenjura for the very first time and I was hooked from the beginning. I really liked the place from the beginning. So I came back again and again and again. And at one point I decided that it was about time to move here because I just love the climbing so much. It's just um, endless potential. And um, about 12 years ago, I think I moved to Frankenjura and since then I've been living here. I've been living here for 16 years, but um, I've been climbing here much longer. Like um, I first went here as a kid with my family and then later when we spent just our summer school holidays here. And yeah, since then I'm stuck here or stayed here. I think nowhere else in Germany do you have that many routes and also that many hard routes. And uh, yeah, that's why I think it's the place to be in, the place to climb. It was easy to find Frankenjura. It was a new world for me because in my home climbing area is small and a little bit chossy and then you come to Frankenjura and find thousands of cracks and different heights and different type of climbing. I've climbed my first 7B plus here, my first 7C I think, first 8A and so on. So I have a lot of memories to this place and also like a lot of memories with different people. The rocks almost feel like this is my home, the Franken Euro or the forest. Yeah. The Frankenjura maybe got so famous because I think for Germany it used to be historically one of the most important places where they started the sport climbing, where they started really pushing the limits of sport climbing with Kurt Albert and Wolfgang Gülich. Actually, people have been climbing in Frankenjura for a very, very long time. More than 100 years ago, people were climbing here. So Frankenjura always has been a very important region in terms of climbing history so there are a lot of milestones. The red point actually was invented here in the 70s by Kurt Albert. If you want to say it to everybody I climbed this route free climb just hands and feet on the rock. So he made a little red dot at every route he could climb and that turned out to be the red pointing which we know nowadays so actually this is still something which is super important to the climbing community today. This is yeah, the start of a new sport called sports climbing. Back at that time, 70s, 80s, 90s, people started to travel to Frankenjura from abroad, from the UK, from the States. Everybody was in Frankenjura in the late 80s because this was the hotspot here. Yeah. We have this rich history of benchmark, first 8C, first 9A of the world. Aktion Direkt, that was the I think the major push in terms of popularity nationally, but more so internationally. I think um, all those big names, Wolfgang Gülich, Kurt Albert, Markus Bock, nowadays Alex Megos, of course, so they have um, somehow coined the, the area here and it gives you a sense of um, climbing history, climbing milestones, so yeah. Many things have happened here, important things for climbing history. And actually, it didn't stop in the 90s, so still nowadays, there are more harder routes, so there's still development, so it's just continuing. The rockets made for hard climbing, yeah. There are a lot of possibilities to find hard routes, yeah. Rock and Frankenjura limestone, 
with a lot of small hoods and you need a lot of finger power and, and small pockets uh, and small crimps. The friction it's not like in granite or sandstone. You stay on tiny spikes, so not so much on friction. There's all these little features that everyone can find, like his foothold, which is personally for me super nice because I'm smaller. If you're patient enough, you always find the perfect beta for you and this is quite nice. People from abroad sometimes find it tricky or find it different than that what they used to. You have like maybe weird holes, like pockets or small crimps which they have to get well. It's so much about finding like the right spot in the pockets and in on setting that's quite hard to find and there haven't been a lot of hard on sites because it's hard. It's not only pockets. Some people think Frank and Jura, it's only pockets and that's about it and that's not true. You would find a crimpy root with no pocket at all. You would find a slopey root, you would find a vertical technical root, you would find like of course the steep stuff but which is not pockety but different style of climbing. You change the area just 10 kilometers and then you have different kinds of rocks. You also have the shorter routes, the more powerful routes and also long routes up to like 35 meters or something. Of course that's not the majority but you have variety and if you know where the places are then you would find something for everybody. If you pass Frankenjura, you can't imagine that there are thousands of cliffs. And then you go into this deep green lush forest and then suddenly there's basically rock everywhere. Maybe not massive cracks, but a lot of small cracks and with a lot of climbing. But often I would say the approach in Frankenjura is super short. Sometimes you have like basically can always be late from the car or have to walk only 100 meters. And if you want to be alone at the crack, just pick a spot where you have to walk maybe 15 or 20 minutes and you'll probably be alone. As the forest is pretty dense, um, sometimes it's kind of tricky to find the right place. So you can get lost pretty easily in the Frankenjura. So it's really important to have a good topo with good uh, directions, a good map of the, of the area, just to avoid getting lost and having to walk around for ages. So usually the, the approach is not very long, but if you don't have the right, <laughs> the right map or the right um, approach, then it can turn out to a very long approach. There are so many different places, so many different cracks. It's more than 1,000 cracks, more than 10,000 routes. So it's just endless potential. And so many hidden little cliffs in the forest. So the places where you go are actually really, really nice. Usually pretty quiet, pretty peaceful. So everything is green in fall, the leaves turn colorful. So it's just a super nice place all year round. In winter, when it's covered in snow, it's also super, super beautiful. Or in spring, there are no leaves on the trees. So everything is super bright and light and the rocks get a lot of sun and daylight. So yeah. Actually, it's super beautiful in every season of the year. It just changes with the seasons, but um, there's always something to climb. There's always something dry or something shady or something sunny. So you will always find something to climb on. So the days where you can't climb in Frankenjura in a year are really, really rare. The Frankenjura is kind of like a quite big area, maybe like two hours north of Munich between Nürnberg, uh, Bayreuth and Bamberg, which are quite far away, like maybe 70 kilometers each. And it's spread out all over. So it's best if you have a car, if you go there, it makes life easier. But um, because there's so much, you could also go to like one place, to one campground, and uh, from each campground you reach some stuff with a bike. So you could also travel with public transportation and go with a bike, that's also possible. Like we did that when we had no driver's license yet, so yeah. If you come to Frankenjura, it's um, very important that you uh, respect the environment because most of the rocks are inside of a property, so you 
pass the garden of someone else or you climb into uh, in the garden of somebody. Be quiet at the rock. Don't use music or, or have loud dogs. So that's that's annoying for other people. And yeah, leave the place like you want to, to see it. So without rubbish and toilet paper and tick marks on the wall. The outside is not a gym. Yeah. There are a lot of really nice things about Frank Jura. I think every climber will find something here in Frank Jura. It's just a huge variety of yeah, routes, crags, places. It's just a nice package. And then, of course, after the climbing, you have those nice little restaurants and nice places to stay. And the valleys are just lovely with the little rivers. And then you have the forest. So in summer, everything is super green and lush. And yeah, it's just a lot of nature and a lot of outdoor experience which you can get here and combined with the climbing and with the after climbing experience. It's just a super, super nice place.